Hello, it's Celeste, and welcome back to my channel. I'm really having a lot of fun teaching online, and if you are an online ESL teacher, I hope that you have had the same experiences that I have had. As I've been going on this journey for nearly two years, um, companies have asked me to um, do additional certifications, which I do, because my theory is, this is a little a side note here, uh, the more certifications that you have, then um, the more bookings that you can receive. So I want to stay fully booked. I want to have a steady stream of clients. And so I get any certification that they offer to me. And one of those is phonics. And this little tip that I have used, I can tell you what happened before I used it and what I'm seeing after I'm using this tip. Now this tip can be used not just for those of us that have been certified in phonics um, online, but also when you are teaching in a regular classroom because these two letters are often confused. So make sure that you subscribe and like this video so that you are notified of other videos that I do, sharing some of my strategies that have been helpful and successful in my classroom. So today we're going to talk about how do I teach the phoneme, which is a letter sound, for the letter P. For those of us that have been teaching phonics for quite some time, you know there is an order in teaching letters. We don't teach them alphabetically, we teach them in a different format. So prior to teaching about the letter P, we teach the letter T. So the children, um, whether it's in a brick and mortar school or if it's online, are already familiar with the letter T. So when I became um, certified in phonics, um, you know, I hear the differences between these two letters, but I forgot that sometimes a microphone can distort some of our sounds if we are not careful. And so when I was teaching the letter P, they kept on saying the letter T. I already knew that they uh, had learned this letter because I've been teaching phonics for, you know, decades. <laughs> but uh, I just wasn't sure why these two were confused because I don't have trouble distinguishing these two letters. These were the ones that I had an easy time learning as a child. I had difficulty uh, difficulties with the letter B and the letter D. Those were my two letters that I uh, got confused in the phoneme and also in writing it down. So I really was just struggling with how can I help my students online uh, know how to say the letter P. So I recorded myself one time and I heard what they were hearing with the microphone. You know, um, I grew up in church and so uh, early on they had those big huge microphones with those soft uh, little like a pillow on top is what I call it. I'm sure those of you that are in the audio visual world, techno world, you probably have the most, um, a more accurate term for it, but it looked like a pillow. And so sometimes our preachers would be up against that microphone and you couldn't tell what they were saying because they were so excited sometimes, some of them more excited than others. And their words began uh, to become jumbled and you could easily pick up a different word than what they were actually saying because of the microphone. So that was what I was hearing when I was listening to my playbacks and I noticed that P can sound very much like T through a microphone. So these are some tips and strategies that I use and since I've been using them I've been having a much higher success rate with my online English learners than I did previously. So I hope that this will be helpful to you and if you have other tips that you have tried that have been uh, very helpful, I hope that you will share them in the comments below because I'm always wanting to learn more from other people who are in the same journey as I am. So this is what I do. With the letter P, of course we teach that this is big P and this is small p. Now these flashcards I just made up. I'm a uh, probably a recovering scrapbook aholic <laughs> and so I have a lot of stickers and so I use these just make, to make my own flashcards. I didn't go out and buy them. So we teach big p, we teach little p. I'm p. I'm p. Uh, then we go through and helping them um, write the letter and then discuss the phoneme the letter sound for the letter P. So what I do, the first thing that I do is that we don't 
overemphasize the sound. Many times I was hearing P and I noticed <laughs> I had to catch myself because I was trying to make sure they heard P rather than the T sound that they were hearing an a uh, sound and most of my Asian students add a uh, to everything pigga, reda, anda. Uh, I mean everything has the a uh, sound so I'm trying to break them of that so what I do is I take just a tissue here and I go to the side here so they can see how my mouth is being formed and what kind of sound I'm getting out so I'll say I'm P They're seeing that just the air is coming out. And then sometimes I'll do it in the front. P. Now they're hearing the differences from t, t, t. It doesn't move the Kleenex, but does. So we practice that a great deal. Now the funny thing is, is that uh, most of my moms or most of my children suddenly <laughs> my whole class dispersed. I'm like, oh no, what? Where are they going? What's going on? <laughs> they were all going to get a tissue or a paper towel. <laughs> and so these parents were scrambling for a tissue, uh, children were scrambling for a tissue, and they were going, they thought that was a great fun activity. So we practice that. They're noticing the breath sounds. They're noticing that there's not a uh after it. And then we practice with words that begin with the letter P. So one is pig. Now they were saying pig uh. They add the uh to the G. So I'll just go pig. Pig. When they were saying pig uh, I'll go pig. Like I'm turning them off of the engine. That has helped. That's another tip. Then we'll look at a color that they're familiar with. Pink. Pink. Now sometimes they'll still say tig and I'll go hmm. T -t tiger. T -t tiger. pig. <laughs> My upside down pig. Then we'll practice that. Uh, other words you can use are penguin, pie. Um, I often get my clip art of pizza. Pizza. So now they're able to distinguish between the P phoneme and the T phoneme. And sometimes they'll We'll do like a blending activity and they'll still want to say the T and I'll go, hmm, t, 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 tiger? And they'll go, no, 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 no. And so we have great fun. No, 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 no. Great job. So I hope that this tip will be helpful to you. I keep a box of tissues beside me in case I have a sneezing attack. So this is really handy to use. Um, it helps them see the airflow. And since I've been using this, I've had a higher success rate in them distinguishing between the letter P phoneme and the T phoneme. So I hope this is helpful to you. And until next time, happy teaching.